Hi there, Susan Winter for SusanWinter.net. So how do you handle catching your mate checking someone else out? Or what if you don't even have to catch them? They are so blatant that you can't help but notice it. I was recently called on an interview for this subject of the wandering eye and what do you do about it? And um, so there are some resources right underneath this video in the description. Check them out. They're great because this was for Medical Daily and International Business Times TV. So there's a lot of material here. But I guess it really depends on where you are with your mate and where you are inside of yourself. So first off, this is just like so uncool. I mean, every guy I know that has a parent that's on the ball told them at some point, oh, and by the way, when you get a girlfriend, don't let her catch you looking at other girls. Or the same is true with a woman. I mean, you might notice, but you don't want to make your partner feel like you don't want them. So if you are in a relationship, you're in a really committed relationship, this is just inexcusable. Uh, there's no way around that. Okay, let's, let's say you've just met this person. You're on a first date. You're meeting for coffee. You're having a drink. You, you know, say it's online dating. You really don't know anything about them. And they stop and notice somebody walking. And completely, you're gone. Uh, somebody just wrote me about this. And yeah, it's a turnoff. <laughs> of course, you'll know that they are looking. But what's more worrisome about the early time for me is that your new material, if anything, their excitement should be about you. From the first meetings, to the first couple of times you hook up, to the initial honeymoon period of your relationship. This is the height of excitement. So if during any one of those times you have a partner, male or female, that is so distracted by someone else, I mean, that's not a good sign. This is, this is where, if anything, they should be all about you. Now, we understand as relationships progress, you know, we get sloppy, don't we? Do you really, like, bother to take a shower after the gym when you're living together a year? Do you, like, sometimes have a dirty t-shirt on and you're cleaning and you know your partner's coming home, but you know you got to finish doing something? We lose it. And, and, you know, that's why love is deep. I mean, we, we start to overlook this and find the deeper qualities, but we start to look at somebody else who's made an effort but we never want to diminish our mate. So it would be especially painful for you if you have come to a place in your relationship where you're feeling rocky, that you don't know where you stand with your partner, or you're feeling that they're not interested in you anymore. And nothing is more harmful and hurtful than seeing them Google some other person. Because it's now the clarification that I find everybody attractive but you. So in a case like that, you're going to be reactive. So what are your choices? If you are really feeling down, I would ask you to think of effect and strategy rather than blurting something out, okay? Because you're going to end up in a fight and you don't have a lot of traction to begin with. I would use the dialogue that is fairly rational and say, you know, I'm here. I can see that. It's really, really hurtful. I mean, can you just be a little more discreet? Can you wait till I get up and walk and take a look at somebody? I wouldn't disrespect you that way. And I don't want you to disrespect me. It's too blatant. Really uncool. Very uh, lacking in class and diplomacy. So however your language is for this. There are uh, some couples that have learned to turn this into a kind of a prelude for sexual interest. It's rare. It's few and far between. I have known people that have taken this issue and rather than fight it, have chosen the tactic to go along with it and encourage it, thinking it's going to happen anyway and that their reactivity to it makes it more notable and makes them seem insecure. So take, for example, the girl who used to catch her guy looking at somebody and she'd say, ah, oh, you like the blonde over there, right? Yeah, she looks good. Yeah, yeah, she looks good. What do you think about that? What about the brunette over there? So by playing along, uh, there is um, some strategy with disassembling the charge for your mate. 
just make sure that whatever you're encouraging in this is something you're really to follow, willing to follow through on because you don't want to start going down a path that you're not going to be able to later, later fulfill and they turn around and say, oh, but I thought you wanted to do a three-way and that wasn't your intention. But sometimes getting on board with the very thing that upsets you and making it appear as though you're controlling its direction is a way to diffuse it for your partner to get a kick out of it. How you handle this is really up to you. Diplomacy and conversation. It is um, the only thing I could think that is an excuse is that you have a partner that's never been in a relationship before, that really doesn't know the rules, that you have a partner that is unedited and doesn't know the effect that has upon you. And the best way to handle that is to do an example of it that they would understand. I would find a comparison example. How would you feel if I, and then you give your version of what you just saw happen. How would you feel? So that normally will work. I hope this helps you. Susan Winter for SusanWinter.net. Check out my site, read the articles, take a look at the videos, listen to the podcasts. Um, the Susan Winter Show is on iTunes. And please continue to write me as to what you'd like to see and what you'd like to hear me talk about in these videos. Thanks a lot.